As we've been talking about, some progressive Democrats rushing to blame Israel for the hospital explosion that killed 500 Gazan citizens. Let's bring in Life, Liberty and Levin with host Mark Levin. Great to have you here, sir. May I just put up on the screen for you to react? This is Re Representative Rashida Tlaib. Immediately after this explosion, she said Israel just bombed the Baptist hospital, killing 500 Palestinians, doctors, children, patients, just like that. POTUS, this is what happens when you refuse to facilitate a ceasefire and help de-escalate. Your war and destruction only approach has opened my eyes and many Palestinian Americans and Muslim Americans like me. We will remember where you stood. And I don't believe, Mark, that she has taken that back, given the, even given the evidence that we have this morning. Well, glad to see you. Glad to be here. Um, the Democrat Party has a problem, and it's affecting the entirety of the United States. They have a Hamas wing in the Democrat Party. Talib is one of them, but there's more than one. They call themselves Democratic Socialists. They had a massive uh, rally, or whatever they called it, about a week ago, with all the anti-Semites and Jew haters, and I might add America haters are the same ones. And people need to understand, she is the result, as are many of these others, of a 30, 40-year effort by Hamas and their various ter uh, terrorist surrogates to infiltrate our college campuses through Students for uh, Justice in Palestine. We know this from the Holy Land Foundation litigation. CARE is another organization that has worked closely with the Democrat Party and previously with the FBI and the Obama administration. Uh, she is the consequence of these things. She is heralded all across uh, the Middle East by not just Palestinians, but the most radical terrorists in the Middle East, and she's proud of it. And so she serves here not as a supporter of the United States, which she hates, but as a supporter of these various movements in the Middle East. And then when she comes under attack, she pulls her race card and also then takes a few steps back, because that's what they're taught. And in that meeting in Philadelphia, where Hamas decided and their funders decided they have an influence in the educational system and media system and the political system in the United States. That's what they said. Don't be obvious supporters of who we are. Use propaganda, use techniques, you know, come across as sort of soft, but we know that what you are and what you're doing is what we support. So, look, here's the bottom line. We have allowed our college campuses to get away from us under this rubric of free speech and academic freedom, which, of course, they don't support. We have allowed our media, pretty much, uh, to hire a number of these individuals as hosts, bring them on as guests. Uh, we have uh, given tenure to professors, many of whom come out of the Middle East and are part of this movement or surrogates for this movement, and they're all around us. So people say, is this wokeism? No, it's not wokeism. This is planned. There's many scholarly documents in this. They follow the money. They follow the litigation in the past. They follow the names of the individuals who've come into this country. This is why having a wide open border is absolute suicide for this country. And so you see all these, these riots going on, right, all over the Middle East, all over the world. These aren't spontaneous. They're feeding them lies. They're feeding them propaganda. They have funded these things. They're organizing it. They're getting the troops and their militia out in the streets to do what they do. And I just want to say one thing. The Gaza Health Ministry that puts out these numbers and so forth, it's Hamas. Hamas terror headquarters sits on a hospital called the Shaifa Hospital in Gaza. Hamas targeted, this hasn't even been reported, and hit Israel's Barziski Hospital last week. They targeted a hospital. NBC, MSNBC, AP, CNN, Reuters, CBS, those are the ones I just counted, were immediately suggesting, if not directly, implying that Israel was responsible for it. And only information they had was propaganda from a Nazi terrorist organization called Hamas. That's all they had. Abbas, he's the moderate. I want the American people to understand the Palestinian Authority, there's nothing moderate about them. I hear distinctions being made by people. Abbas was the mastermind who funded and strategized the terrorist attack in 1972 in Munich against the Olympian, the, uh, the Israeli athletes. He's the one who does it. Abbas is the one who hands out pensions to terrorists coming out of the Palestinian Authority territories against Jews. We passed the Taylor Force Act in Congress, which Biden will not enforce, which says if you don't 
If you don't lay off this terrorism, we have to cut you off because you're using American taxpayer money for this. And it was Trump who cut off UNRWA because UNRWA is an open spigot. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the UN Security Council will not call Hamas or the Islamic Jihad terrorist organizations, which means they can get money for quote unquote refugees. UNRWA deals with refugees, specifically Palestinians. And so we give them a billion dollars. In fact, we gave them $75 million about three weeks ago, and it's, it's, uh, it's worked through the system, a third of which goes to the Palestinians. And when they say, we have very careful methods for, for watching where the money goes, no, they don't. They don't even have very careful methods where our taxpayers go through COVID-19. How the hell are they going to be able to track all this stuff? In the old days, somebody like Talib would have been expelled from Congress. I looked this up, expulsions in the past, mostly related to the Civil War, but the basis was disloyalty to America. I don't mean criticizing America, even verbally attacking America, disloyalty to America. And what you will find is in America, these people in the streets, they not only hate Israel, they not only hate Jews, they hate America. They hate America. And the Democrat Party has a problem within its own ranks. And then finally, if I may, with Joe Biden, Joe Biden has done more than appease Iran, which is the mastermind behind all this. He's funded them. Iran was on its back. Iran was economically in desperate shapes. Their people were rising up. They were getting, working towards overthrowing that government. And in comes Biden, and mostly through the oil monies, as I've explained over the last 10 days, mostly through the oil monies, they've gotten anywhere from 50 to $100 billion. And that spigot's still on. And Qatar, who's supposed to be our ally. That's where the head of the Palestinian, uh, excuse me, of the Hamas terrorists, that's where they have safe haven. They're living in five-star hotels. Their kids have Lamborghinis. And Qatar funds Hamas just as much as Iran funds Hamas. And Turkey, our NATO ally, several of the Hamas leaders are given safe haven in Turkey. We have to put our foot down with our so-called allies. You know, this little tiny country of Israel with 7 million Jews, we keep saying about they might get hit from the north, they're getting hit from the south. What if they get hit from Iran? What? Exactly. They are surrounded. So the extent we have influence with so-called moderate Arab regimes, it's time to exercise it and stop appeasing them. UN missile embargo on Iran expired at midnight. And I, I, didn't, I don't think, I haven't seen any reporting that the United States or our allies tried to stop that from happening. That is so shocking. And other than you and a few others mentioning it, you won't find this mentioned in most of the American media, which is focused on a hospital that the terrorists themselves hit, if in fact they hit it. There's now some reporting coming out of the Middle East that it actually hit the parking lot. There's no evidence that 500 people died. And yet, that goes on and on and on, and you hit on the most important point all day. The cap on Iran for making, distributing drones and missiles is now off. So they can provide them to any country they want, whether it's Russia against the Ukrainians, whether it is China against Taiwan, whether it's any country on the face of the earth. This was part of the Obama deal. At some point, the caps come off. Well, the cap came off. Biden doesn't talk about it. Blinken doesn't talk about it. Most of the media in America are too busy focused on attacking Israel. The fact is that what you just mentioned is a direct threat to the United States because it's the same country, Iran, that's moving at, at blazing speed to get its nukes. They're building ICBMs. They put those nukes on the ICBM. And then what are we going to do? I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.